Hey there, fabric lovers. Welcome back to Be a Consulting Pro. Today, we have an exciting topic to dive into. In this video, we will discuss about Apache Spark in Microsoft Fabric. We will see how can Apache Spark revolutionize your data processing and analytical workflows. So, if you would like to learn more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video. My name is Ajay Kumar and I create videos on Microsoft Fabric and Microsoft Azure. Now we are also creating videos on Microsoft Fabric on your demand. In this video, I'm going to let you know what is Apache Spark, how you can use it in Microsoft Fabric and not only that, I'm going to give you a demo as well. So without wasting any more time, let's get started. It is important to note that default settings provided by Microsoft Fabric for Apache Spark are generally optimal for your, all the workloads. However, you can tweak these settings too. You can go to my workspace settings. Over there, you can go to the data engineering part and there you are going to find the different settings for Apache Spark. Moving on, let's talk about the libraries. The Apache Spark ecosystem offers a vast collection of code libraries that caters most of your data processing tasks. In Microsoft Fabric, Spark clusters comes with preloaded commonly used libraries. But don't worry, if you need to install the additional libraries that you can easily manage them or install them through the library page management in the workspace settings. Now let's understand how does Apache Spark works. Well, Apache Spark works on divide and conquer. And what does that mean? That simply means whenever you are trying to process the data through Apache Spark engine or framework, that is going to distribute into the different nodes. Also, you can say that the different computing nodes over there. And that would easily process and do the multiprocessing on the required data that you are trying to process over there. You submit data processing job as a code and that is going to initiate a driver program. This program is going to utilize the Spark context to manage the distribution of processing across the Spark cluster. So that's how it is going to work. To begin, let's have a look at how to prepare and set up Apache Spark in Microsoft Fabric. Before this, you should also have Fabric trial period or a Fabric license to start working on that. As you can see that on the top of my screen, I have trial period, which is 59 days left. Right now, I'm under my Fabric workspace. Over here, you would see on the top, there are some workspace settings. And over here, you would see there are two options. One is Power BI settings, and then second one is Data Engineering or Science settings. Here, we have this Spark Compute. So please click on this, and here you would find the different options. What you can do over here, you can see the different properties like Spark properties. If you want to learn more, click over here, and you will go over there. You can also find the runtime version of Spark and then you will see there is a default tool for workspace over here. If you want to create new, you can do that as well. I won't go into this one. Second one is library management. As I mentioned earlier, Microsoft Fabric has all the pre-installed libraries that are commonly used. But in case you need specific libraries and you want to include them, you can manage it over here on this page under workspace settings. So these were the different settings that you can try on your Fabric workspace. Now we are going to do one slight exercise. Typically, you will write code using PySpark, a Python variant specifically designed for Spark. PySpark, along with Spark SQL, forms the backbone of most data engineering and analytical workloads. You can perform a wide range of operations using these languages, making Spark a versatile tool for big data processing. Now that we have covered the basics, it's time for you to get hands-on with Apache Spark in Microsoft Fabric. Now we are going to do one simple demo or one exercise where I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how you can do that. Now, in order to do this exercise, we are going to need certain files. So as you can see now on my screen, I have this order folder where I have three different files that we are going to use, which are in 2019, 2020 and 2021. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to create a new lake house and how to do that. In order to do that, you have to first do show all and over there, this is my lake house. I can give it any name. So what I'm going to say, Apache Spark Lake House, that's all I'm going to give it a name. Now I'm going to start this. And we are going to load a folder over here. And how to do that? Well, well, over here under the files, there is an option of upload, and we are going to upload a folder rather than files. I have to browse it. So simply click over here, go to your data files that you have, which is over here. This is my folder. 
and I'm going to upload it. It's going to ask me and I just said yes. And also click on this overwrite if folder already exists. So start uploading it. It will take some time, but not too long. And you can see that it has been uploaded over here. Once the file is uploaded, we are going to expand the files and see what is there. As you can see that this is my orders folder and I have my three files over here. Now my real work is going to begin and then I'm going to show you step by step that how you can use these files. And I'm going to say a new notebook because I'm going to start utilizing a new notebook. It's going to start a job behind but it won't take too much time. So over here on the top you can also select the languages whichever you would like to learn but I'm going to keep it by Spark by default. If you would like to change it you can change it over here. Now for the starters what we are going to do we are going to simply type this and let's see what it's going to say where I'm going to say welcome to my new notebook then there's a second language is saying type here in the cell editor code and if you want to remove that you can remove that too and let's keep this only so as, you, as soon as you do you're going to see this one uh, now I have already started the cluster and I want to show this as a markdown so, and for that we have to switch back to the editing mode and then we can modify the markdown if it's required to so let's start with the code now so over here I'm just trying to get a data frame and for that I'm going to use this code I'm trying to load the file which is 2019.csv from my orders folder which is over here so if I just click over here then you will find this 2019 file I'm just ordering over here and I'm saying it is a header which is I'm marking as true and file format is csv that's it and I, after that I want to display the data so let's run this cell and it's going to run very quickly and here you can see all the data that is available in this file. So that's how you can run any of the code. You can read any file that can be Excel, CSV, text or any other format that you would like to use over here. And it is pretty simple. Trust me guys. And if you don't know Python, then I request you to learn at least basics of Python. If you don't know, then you can find several different courses online, even on YouTube, which are free of course. And please start learning. Over here, although we are using the PySpark, but it is very similar to the Python, except there is some syntax differences over there. Over here, you would have noticed that this time I have this index and then there is no header because I said already the headers are true. But what if I'm going to say headers are false? So let's see what is going to be there. So let's come over here at the bottom and this time I'm just simply saying my headers are false. So let me run it. And here you can see that my column C01, C1, C2, etc. are coming as my headers over here. In the last part, the headers were not looking correct. And this part, we have the headers. And if you would like to further modify the headers as well, you can do that too. Now we have our data frame and we have the data from the first row, but the headers that are generated, those are the auto-generated headers and that's not correct. For that, what we have to do, we have to modify it a bit more. And for that, we can define our structure using PySpark. Let me show you how to do that. For that, you have to simply again, click on this plus code and here we are going to define the structure of our headers where I'm going to say my structure field sales order number is the first one, then second, then third, etc, etc. And there are different data types as well. Once it's done under this order schema, then here I'm going to define that my schema is the order schema, this one. And let's see what is going to be the result this time. And here my headers are appearing perfectly fine because we have defined them. As I mentioned, we can create our own schema to all the structure of the data that we are looking for. Now, so far, we have read the data only from the 2019.csv file. But if you have to read the data from all the files and also your structure is same, then how you are going to do that? Well, for that also we have a solution. Rather than providing a particular name, what we can do, we can provide a asterisk stigma or the star mark. And let me show you how to do that. For that, simply, you have to come over here again, click a new code or new code cell, basically. And here you can see that right now I'm providing order slash then star mark. Now you can see that I'm reading data from all the three files and I have all the data over here. Isn't it amazing? Well, if you're already working with PySpark or you are a data engineer, then for you, it's pretty childish game. But for all those who doesn't have any idea, I believe it's quite brilliant. Now, if you would like to transform the data, suppose you have some data from the different files like I have over here from the orders folder and you would like to transform your data, you can do that. And it is again, simply a data analysis or where we perform the extract, transform and load the data. We have already uploaded our data to Data Lake House. Now, what we have to only do, we have to simply transform the data. And how we can do that? For that, again, we can run a code, something like this over here and we can simply run it. And you will find your code is over here. Now the time comes that how to save this data, you have to save it as well. And then you can run the same job again and again, you can make it as an automatic process that anytime whenever you have a similar kind of data, you can apply the same transformations on that and then you can run it through a job. Now you can review your code and can make sure that the transformations have been done. If not, then you can try again.
You can use the full power of Spark SQL library to transform the data by filtering rows, driving, removing, renaming columns, and applying any other required data modifications. Now, it comes to save the transform data. For that, we have to again add a new cell with certain code to save the transform data in a parquet format. And we have to overwrite it if it's already existing. So you have to simply click again plus code or create a new cell. And here it's saying that transformed underscore df, which is this one, transform underscore df, which you can see over here, we are going to overwrite it and we're going to save into a parquet format. So let me just run it. And now you can see that my transform data saved if I'm going to come over here and I'll try to refresh it. So let's see what happens. Here you can see that my transform underscore data folder has been created and there's the orders one if I'm going to click over here. So let's see what happens orders and these are my different files over there. So that means my transform data has been saved now. If you want to automate the process, then you can create a job that is going to run over and over again. That's all for today's video on Apache in Microsoft Fabric. I hope you find this video valuable and informative. If you did, please don't forget to hit the thumbs up. And also, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe this channel and hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates. As always, feel free to leave any questions and concerns in the comment section below. Until next time, happy data processing.